Martinsburg's death is setting up what could be a big political fight so close to the presidential election. Eyewitness News reporter Stefan Kim is live in Midwood, Brooklyn, where Ginsburg went to high school. Stefan? Well, just as Ginsburg's story started here in Brooklyn, she graduated from James Madison High School behind me. But even though she has passed, her final chapter has yet to be written because what happens next, this political fight that is about to erupt will also be part of her legacy. With the passing of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the fate of abortion rights, voting rights, gender and racial equality now hang in the balance of the nine Supreme Court justices, five lean conservative, four lean liberal. Ginsburg's death comes just 46 days before the election. Justice Antonin Scalia's death came 269 days before the presidential election in 2016. President Obama's pick that year was blocked by Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and the GOP, saying voters should decide who fills the vacancy. It was a bitter fight Democrats vowed to never forget. But tonight, Leader McConnell releasing this statement, reading in part, In the last midterm election before Justice Scalia's death in 2016, Americans elected a Republican Senate majority because we pledged to check and balance the last days of a lame duck president's second term. We kept our promise. Since the 1880s, no Senate has confirmed an opposite party president's Supreme Court nominee in a presidential election year. McConnell goes on to say, by contrast, Americans re-elected our majority in 2016 and expanded it in 2018 because we pledged to work with President Trump and support his agenda, particularly his outstanding appointments to the federal judiciary. Once again, we will keep our promise. President Trump's nominee will receive a vote on the floor of the United States Senate. So who will President Trump nominate? Multiple sources closer to the president with direct knowledge tell ABC News the list of potential nominees is very short and include at least one woman. Two sources tell ABC News Judge Amy Coney Barrett is seen as a leading contender. Confirmed in 2017 to the Seventh U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in Chicago, she's a former Notre Dame law professor who has clerked for Justice Antonin Scalia. She's viewed as the most conservative member on the list, which could mean she'll vote to overturn Roe v. Wade. This, by the way, was then-candidate Trump in March 2016 after the death of Justice Scalia. Because I think the next president should make the pick, and I think they shouldn't go forward, and I believe I'm you know, and pretty much in line with what the Republicans are saying. I think that the next president should make the pick. We don't have a very long distance to wait. Democrats have been warning Republicans not to fill a possible vacancy after denying President Obama in 2016. Senator Tim Kaine, the party's last vice presidential nominee, has said in recent months it could compel Democrats to consider adding seats to the high court. Of course, for that to happen, Democrats need to first regain the majority. Meanwhile, New York's senior Senator Chuck Schumer tweeting tonight, the American people should have a voice in the selection of their next Supreme Court justice. Therefore, this vacancy should not be filled until we have a new president, quoting McConnell, who made the same statement four years ago. Now, this will be President Trump's third Supreme Court nominee. No doubt this fight will now define the presidential race during this final stretch.